I've been getting a ton of photos from you guys and questions over on Instagram and Facebook asking about your tomato problems. They range from cupping or curling leaves all the way to purple stems and leaves. And the question here is, is this detrimental or is this okay? So today's video, we're gonna look at whether or not those purple leaves and stems matter or how to correct them along with the reasons why your leaves or your on your tomatoes may be curling and how to diagnose if it's a problem or something Thing that is just completely normal for the plants to experience. So first off, let's look at the purple stems and leaves. This is probably the most common one I see. And the default internet answer to this is a lack of potassium and magnesium. And this is true. When we are lacking these, we are lacking proper photosynthesis and proper chlorophyll development. And chlorophyll is what makes our plants green. So the absence of this tends to leave us with purple blotching. Now, the truth here is when you add magnesium or potassium, it doesn't necessarily alleviate the issue. And in many cases, it'll persist and then suddenly disappear. And there's a reason for this. It's because the soil likely was never deficient in potassium or magnesium. Now, the reason why the plant is struggling to get these two nutrients and is appearing as though it's lacking the nutrient truly comes down to the soil itself or the condition the plant is in. So the number one reason actually comes down to the pH. We've talked about this on this channel a number of different times, but ultimately the pH of our soil determines how much nutrients can be uptaken or the bioavailability of that nutrients in that soil system. So if you're reusing old potting soil, it's likely you're going to encounter this. If you're doing a DIY potting soil, something you're doing on your own, you're likely going to encounter this. If you're using soil blocks and using straight peat and you're not amending it with any form of lime, again, likely going to encounter this. So the addition of lime or sulfur, which is more rare, in the case of using a soilless material to seed start will come down to pH. So it's definitely something you want to look at. The best way to test this is with just a solution and that those Raffi tests, they work wonderful this. For this, you, it doesn't have to be exact. We just need to know what range we're in. Now say we've already planted everything and we can't go in and actually amend it at this point. It's okay. All we need to do is water with a pH adjusted water. So if we want to fix this, this purple issue, all we need to do is use a pH adjusted water. And I did a whole video on this, so I'm actually going to get you to reference that in order to get an idea of how to do so. These two steps will help avoid that purple coloration from a potassium and magnesium problem earlier in that season after everything's planted and what has to do with pH. What I will say here is that it is now very likely or possible, depending on how long this has been going on for, that those plants later on in the future will suffer from blossom and rot. Blossom and rot, or burr as some people like to call it, will tend to happen to tomato plants that are grown in an environment as seedlings, as seedlings is the key here because people seem to think that when the plant is an adult, that's where we give it the magnesium and calcium to get those fruits. But the reality is, is that magnesium and calcium actually build up in the soil over time. And so actually providing it from the seedling stage all the way to adult stage is the key to success. So we may notice that those plants are going to be more susceptible to blossom and rot from a magnesium causation, not from an inaccurate watering causation, which is also another reason for burr as well. So do keep that in mind. If it is a quite an old plant, you may want to start off from the beginning or you just may want to watch for blossom and rot or consider maybe starting some more seeds just in case. So just a heads up there. If you see something in the fall that looks a little bonky, it may be due to the problems that you had here earlier in the spring. Now the next reason we end up with purple stems and leaves actually comes down to the soil temperature. Now tomatoes and peppers and a lot of garden vegetables that we start indoors actually are tropical and so they're used to a warmer soil, usually around 20 degrees Celsius but can go as low as 10. So because of that the roots themselves are active in uptaking nutrients and doing their thing properly only at those warmer temperatures. This means that you really want to encourage those plants to be in a warm environment. Now, it could mean a heat mat, but I would urge some caution there because heat mats without a regulator on them can be a little bit too warm on the warm side, so you may end up with legginess. But a sun-warmed ledge, a register in the house, just an ambiently warm, warmer room is going to help ensure that that soil is nice and warm. So if you are thinking to yourself, I have new pots, 
potting soil, but my tomatoes were being grown in the basement. This may be a way to diagnose that it's a soil temp issue, not a fertilizer or a pH issue. So just keep that in mind. Now, of course you can apply potassium magnesium and almost force it into the plant by over applying it. There's no reason why you can't. Now, but keep in mind that fertilizer is a balance. And I've talked about this plenty of times in my on my channel is you don't want to over fertilize or over compensate in hopes that it's going to patch up the problem. Because when we end up with an excess of magnesium and potassium, we end up imbalancing some other nutrient uptake that can take place. And so that plant will become deficient in other minerals um, that the plant needs to grow. So just keep that in mind. So the next thing is the cupping of leaves. There are three scenarios in which I've encountered in which most tomato growers will encounter. There is the curling up of leaves. So where the leaves curl up on themselves. And this is mostly due to environmental factors. There's nothing to worry about. And I'll insert some images of what upward curling looks like. This is because the plant is too cold or too warm. The light's too far away. The light's too close. Uh, maybe you're hardening it off for the first time. I mean, these are all environmental factors. Those leaves are the equivalent of our body limbs and them being spread out more or curling in on themselves is a way in which they can regulate the temperature around them. And the plant will go back to normal once we get those temperatures in line. So the ideal temps for a tomato to be at are around that 20 to 28 degrees Celsius range. Above that, and they're too hot, and below that, they're technically too cold. And same goes with the soil. We want the soil in and around 10 degrees Celsius minimum uh, to about 25 max. Again, above that, they struggle. Below that, they struggle. So that's kind of the ranges. We want to keep tomatoes in, and if you're outside of those ranges, that would explain the curling. When it comes to the lights, I can't give you a measurement on lighting only because it's going to be very specific to the brand that you're using. So just follow your brand's instructions on your lighting and you should be a-okay. And when I'm transitioning them outdoors, just be sure to harden off. The next one is tip top curling. So that's when the top leaves and the new growth is very thin, very spindly, and almost twisting in a way. Now this can be a virus, but it also, in most cases, cases in my experience when looking at your guys' gardens over the past three years, it's usually a pesticide problem brought from a compost purchase. So there is either a persistent or maybe not a persistent herbicide, but just even a glyphosate or something that's a little bit, you know, newer compost. And that is causing that curling or that twisting of those top leaves. And I'll again insert some photos of what that looks like. That is a pesticide issue. Those plants are very likely are not going to produce in that soil. So you'd probably just want to rip them out entirely and then watch my video on reclaiming that soil um, for the future. The next one is curling down. And this one I see most often in seed starting conditions. It's almost like a drooping of the actual leaf. And now the reason for this really comes down to the soil itself. If you're using a wicking mat, bottom watering, a tray water type setup, then it's very common to see this because it's just an over watering, not an over watering to the point that you've harmed the plant but just an over it's the plant is just heavy it's full of water and it's just kind of hanging there because gravity is doing its job so the best way to fix this and not that it needs to be you know immediately rectified because so long as you water appropriately the plant will just move up and down movement is very normal for a plant to do it's called phototropism i mean not even phototropism there's just there's different movements that happen with water and sun and you name it so very normal process for a plant to experience but if you're worried about that droopiness, I would just let that plant dry out for a period of time and then go in and water after. So you don't want to water it, let it dry out to the point that it's wilting, but you just want to let it dry out a little bit before watering again and you'll see everything perk right back up. But ultimately, I hope this helps you guys out when it comes to determining what's wrong with your tomato seedlings. If you guys have any questions, of course, be sure to send me photos over on Instagram or Facebook. The Facebook group we have, very helpful. It's not just me, it's the whole community and Instagram if you DM me it is just me and so I'll get to your DMs as soon as I possibly can but sometimes I get like 20 30 40 in a day so just a heads up there thanks for watching I'll talk to you guys next time bye